are you more likely to date someone older or younger than you? Probably older. Yeah? More likely, but right. it's not like against the rules. Gold digger? You know, younger. Right, right. Okay, every once in a while, younger's okay. It's not like, okay. Um, so... Unless they're like illegal, then it is against the rules. Right, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully that's not your thing. As a man, what could be more enjoyable than being somebody of status? When you're somebody of status, people take notice of you. When you speak, they listen. Women will see that people like you. They respect you. You have confidence and authority. People look to you for leadership because they see that you have talent, knowledge, and wisdom. Now that is an enjoyable experience and it is completely normal for you to want that. The thing is, is that you have to earn it. There is nothing more off-putting than unearned confidence. Some young guy who's just throwing around opinions as though they're facts, He's bragging, he's boasting, thinking that he knows everything. There's absolutely no substance to him. It's all completely superficial. Now, for a guy like that, possibly in the short term, that whole act is going to work on extremely low quality women because they're not really intelligent enough to see beneath the surface. But the kind of woman that you should want to date, a high quality woman, is going to see right through that. Again, it's not that being a confident, knowledgeable, assertive man is a bad thing. Far from it. That's what you should be shooting for. That is the end goal. Women are attracted to that because they know the kind of work and personal development that goes into creating that kind of confidence. But if you are exposed as a fraud, women will be absolutely vicious because you have committed the unforgivable sin of trying to trick them and manipulate them into thinking that you are more valuable than you truly are. If you're still at the early stages of your life and you haven't yet developed into the man that you ultimately want to be, a high quality woman is going to respect you a lot more if you have some dignity and humility because at least then it shows that you have an accurate self-image. You understand where you exist in reality. Again, I'm not saying that an act of confidence isn't going to work if you're just trying to date low quality women. I'm saying that the kind of women that you should want to date, high quality women, are going to see right through it. So what does this all mean for young guys in their early 20s who want to be a well-respected, high-status, high-quality man, not just because it's attractive to women, but also for its own sake, but they can't really claim that as their reward yet because they're still young, they're still learning about themselves, they're still developing themselves, they're still chasing those kind of achievements. If that sounds like you, then I have a message, and I mean this in the nicest possible way but you need to get over yourself. Swallow your pride, get humble, put your head down and do the work. Being a high value, high status, confident, respected, intelligent man, that is your future if you take action right now. So you want to earn that confidence and you want to start taking action. Well, where should you start? Well, outside of the obvious ones like getting in shape and having a good career, I want to share three tips that I think are extremely important for young guys to know. Number one, Make friends with men who are older than you, ideally men who are more accomplished than you. Of course, it's nice to have a feeling of authority in the social group, that feeling of people looking up to you. But if you really haven't accomplished much yourself, then just having guys younger than you who look up to you, even though you haven't really done much to earn that in the wider societal context, that's not really you developing, that's just you stroking your own ego. I know it sounds strange, but ideally you should be trying to find men who make you feel small, not by their attitude towards you, but by comparison with their accomplishments. Wherever you are on the ladder, you can learn a lot more by looking up at the people above you than you can by looking down at the people below you. Which leads me to my second tip. Speak less and listen more. Again, you're going to have to fight your natural instincts here because it feels good to talk and to share your opinions. That's a pleasurable sensation. But if you're still a young guy in your early 20s, your opinions just don't carry that much weight because you haven't lived much of life yet. You might dream of some day in the future where you are so wise, so respected, so knowledgeable that people actively seek your advice, people ask you questions. But if that is what you ultimately want, then for now, you should be the one asking questions. And not just in the presence of higher quality men than yourself. I mean, with everyone, speak less and listen more. Talking does have some benefits, no doubt about it. When you speak your opinions, you allow them to be tested in a public setting and that helps you refine your ideas. But most of the time, what you should be engaged in is data collection. 
observing the world around you, understanding as many different perspectives as possible. When somebody says something that you don't understand, have the humility to ask them to explain it for you. If somebody expresses an opinion that you don't agree with, don't argue with them, ask them, how did you reach this conclusion? If somebody has completely different goals and priorities to you, ask them, what is it that motivates you? It's all just raw data, and the more data that you collect, the more accurate your conclusions are going to be. My last tip is to learn as much as you can. Knowledge is power, but it's also inner peace. When you understand the world around you, how and why it operates the way that it does, you have less anxiety and more confidence in your ability to read situations properly and navigate them with ease. What specific knowledge should you be gathering? Well, I would advise you to become an expert in one specific thing, and usually that's the thing that you make your career out of. So whether it's engineering, the stock market, music, whatever it is, become an expert in that field. But that's not enough in and of itself. You also need to have a basic understanding of pretty much everything. History, politics, pop culture, philosophy, science. I'm not saying that you need to be an expert in all of these things, but you should have a basic, competent level of understanding of all of them. It is really important that you do not rush this process. Don't start forming premature opinions. Right now, you're just reading about a subject. You're watching videos. You're talking to people. You don't have to have an opinion on it straight away. You're just learning at the moment. If somebody asks you, what do you think about something? You don't have to have a concrete answer. You can say quite legitimately, I'm still learning about that. I haven't reached any definitive conclusions yet. The thing is that once you reach a hard opinion about something, then you begin to reject all of the new incoming data that's gonna undermine that conclusion. At that point, it's very easy for your mind to stop taking in new perspectives and progressively you get less and less wise. So learn to keep a perpetually open mind. Use your 20s to set yourself up as a lifelong learner. And remember, true wisdom does not mean having all of the answers. It means being in touch with reality so that you have a clear understanding of what you do know and, more importantly, what you don't know. So those are three basic tips for guys in their early 20s. That list is not comprehensive and I will cover more on this in the future, but hopefully it's enough to get you started. As a young man, your early 20s are not an easy time in your life because truthfully, you're kind of at the bottom of the ladder. And I understand you want to be achieving things. You want to be celebrating amazing accomplishments and having all of this confidence and status. That's completely normal and natural and it's good that you desire that. But what you need to do is take that burning motivation, that desire that you have, and put that energy towards improving yourself right now so that eventually your dream, your fantasy, can be your reality. In my private consultations, I've talked to a lot of guys who've had problems with women that they've dated, really toxic relationships. But that's not the only issue they've had with the opposite gender. Many times, men talk to me about the toxic relationships they have in their family. I've heard stories of mothers and sisters completely rage about men and toxic masculinity or give really horrible dating advice. And it's depressing to hear that these female family members are more committed to the radical feminist ideology than to actually helping out their own flesh and blood. So how do you deal with these toxic family members? Well, that is the topic of my latest video. In this video, I explain what moral obligations you have to your family members and in what circumstances those obligations are null and void. I also talk about the path to take when you're trying to fix a toxic dynamic and the signs to look out for for when it's completely pointless to try. I talk about why so many men feel stuck in these kind of toxic dynamics, as well as giving information and resources so that men can inform themselves as to the underlying psychology of this kind of dysfunction and how to successfully navigate your way out of it. And lastly, I explain why it's necessary as a man to create some distance from your family as one of the final steps towards complete adulthood. If you're struggling with the relationships in your life, specifically female members of your family, you need to see this video. Right now, for every video that I post on YouTube, I post an additional bonus video on my Patreon page. At the moment, that means that you're only seeing half of the total content that I create. If you'd like to see the other half, then please go and sign up at my Patreon page. It's just a $5 a month subscription. You get instant access to a whole bunch of exclusive videos and it's a fantastic way to support this channel. I really hope to see you over there.